Hey, thanks for stopping by. My name's Thomas, and this is Zarbo Audio Projects. Today's video is maybe a little different. It is audio-based, but it's more geared towards the fun side of audio. As you saw from the thumbnail, I've been working on a few jukebox type of music players for the past several months. Now, these things are not designed for critical listening. They basically exist to provide easily accessible tunes at a decent quality to little kids. But please don't click off yet. This really has very little to do with kids and a lot to do with a really cool little media player board that I discovered several months ago on AliExpress. This is the board and yeah, you can see by the dimensions, it's pretty small. This is an all-in-one solution for getting push button music on demand at a very low price. I paid under $13 for this board. So let's take a closer look. Starting on the right side, we can see that it's pretty flexible. It runs off of 9 to 24 volts, and it will be happy with both 8 ohm and 4 ohm speakers. Yes, it has a built-in amplifier. It's mono. It's designed to be a jukebox after all. There's really no need for stereo. Here's the volume control. It's one of those small pots that you need a little screwdriver to adjust. You can connect the lamp here that will indicate when the unit's on. And these dip switches here determine how the unit operates. The units I purchased all had this micro SD card slot here that holds the music. But there are a few other versions, some with built-in memory. Check the link in the description to see the options. Moving to the left side, we can see where things start to get interesting. There are 10 connections here, one ground pin and nine additional pins. When you connect the ground pin to any of the other pins, it plays that track from the memory. So, connect pin number 2 to ground, it starts playing track number 2. Connect pin number 7 to ground, and it plays, you guessed it, track number 7. Each track needs to be named 00001 through 00009 in order for the board to recognize them. I'm not sure just how long or how large each track is allowed to be, I used Audacity to lengthen each track from one song to three, so basically from three minutes to around nine minutes, and it seemed to work just fine. I built a few different jukeboxes in different form factors. This one is for my classroom, and this one is for my wife's room. It just so happens that we're both preschool teachers, so now you know why my hair is totally gray. <laughs> this one is for a friend of mine at school. They're different shapes, but they all work basically the same way. I had some horizontal space in my classroom, so I made mine to fit that space. My wife has a huge classroom, so I just went mini Wurlitzer on it and didn't worry about how big it was. And my friend needed a floor standing unit that was fairly small. So I went vertical and kept that one kind of petite. Three ways of doing the same thing, basically. I won't go into a lot of detail on the construction of these things because that's not really the point of this video. They're pretty simple boxes and they're fairly easy to figure out. Except for the Wurlitzer clone with the curved top. I'll show you how I did that. That could be of interest to some. Basically, after cutting out the front and back curves, sanding them to be basically identical and gluing them up as a carcass, I cut two pieces of 1 8 inch HDF long enough to go from one side over the top to the other side. I drenched one panel with Type Bond 2 wood glue and stuck the other panel on top of it. And I applied Gorilla Glue to the carcass and just sort of set it on top in the middle. I did shoot a screw in the top middle to keep things from moving as I clamped, but basically you just pull down on both panels and at the same time clamp them down as you go. Now this is sped up quite a bit, but the whole gluing process only took about 15 minutes or so. I went with a glittery blue look for my wife's unit, that's the color she chose, and I did a wood veneer finish for mine, and bright red for my friend's music player. I think that one looks pretty cool. The contrast with the gray is kind of eye-catching in my opinion. Red and gray are a good combo. I put a hinge on the main panel of my wife's curved top player just to make getting it put together a little bit easier since it was kind of large, but for the other two units I just screw the panels in. As you can see, the board is so small you can stick it pretty much anywhere. I did need to reduce the voltage from 12 volts, which the amp board used, down to 5 volts, which is what the spectrum analyzer needs. 
and I did that with one of these adjustable buck converters from Amazon. Pretty easy. I found these fairly cheap momentary push buttons on Amazon to enable the song selection. They looked to be fairly durable and they were colorful. They were also fairly easy to hook up. I just made a bus bar out of some solid copper wire, some scrap Romex from your last house wiring project will work fine, and I used that as the common ground line which I connected to one lead of each button. Then I connected the button's other lead to each of the numbered pins on the board. For the speaker, I used cheap buyout 5 and a quarter inch full range drivers that I purchased from Parts Express years ago. I think like 2011 or so. I still have a case of these things actually. Hilariously, I didn't even design an enclosure in WinISD or anything. I just stuck the dang speaker in there and hooked it up. No filter on it or nothing. And you know what? They all sound pretty good. Half decent bottom end, a little light on the high end, but just fine for what I'm asking it to do. I did give the kids the option to adjust the remaining available volume with a speaker volume control from Parts Express. Now this differs from a normal potentiometer in that a pot usually carries small signals, millivolts usually, from the preamp to the amp stage. And this speaker volume control can handle several watts. It's the kind of thing that you see on some wall hanging speakers so that the user can adjust the volume somewhat. I scrounged up a few old speaker grills from various car speakers that I had back in the day to cover up the drivers on my friend's unit and my own. However, my wife wanted gray grill cloth, so I used that instead. Now, I don't trust the kids to not poke a finger in this grill. Heck, it could even get kicked. Hers is kind of low. So, first I epoxied a piece of non-metallic window screen material to give some strength before covering with the grill cloth. You never know with kids. Instead of using a dedicated indicator light to show that the unit was on, I installed this nifty spectrum analyzer instead. It has a nice snappy look to it that the kids love and it was only $15. Leave a comment below if you'd like to see a dedicated video on that spectrum analyzer. So how it works is basically you press a button and it plays the track associated with that button. You can also set it up with the dip switches to play a track all the way through before it will play another track. Uh, actually, there are lots of different ways to configure this thing, and we don't have time to review all of them in this video, but if you want, you can either pause this now to get an idea of how this can be used, or just check out the link in the description and you'll find the information there. I powered all of these units with various spare 12-volt wall warts that I had laying around. The amperage on those ranged from 2 to 5 amps, and it worked fine with all of them. I did have one unit crap out on me. I hooked it up and I played like one second of a song and then it just died. All my hookups were good so it wasn't me, but I do still think it's a decent item. It looks to be produced with some quality, the boards look nicely made and populated with good components, maybe I just got a bad one, but I usually buy a spare with stuff like this just in case. So I swapped out the bad one, put in my spare and I was back in business in a few minutes, but I just wanted to let you know that I did happen to get a bad one. Anyway, like I said, this is more of a fun project. I needed some type of music center in my classroom and I've always wanted to make something like this to replace my CD player with. Something that the kids could control completely on their own. And this thing is a hit. The kids love this thing. I think the ability to just press a big red button and get a song to come out of it really appeals to kids. And depending on how fancy you wanted to get with a cabinet design, you could make something pretty cool for either the kid in your life or even maybe for a game room or a home theater setup or something like that. There really are a lot of possibilities with this. It's kind of a fun toy to play with. Then what would you do with something like this? I'd love to hear your ideas in the comments. If you like this video, would you please consider subscribing and maybe share this video with a friend? You see, I'm trying to figure out if it's worth it to keep doing this. And who knows, maybe a little growth spurt would help convince me to keep at it. Well, that's it for this one. Thanks a lot for watching, and maybe I'll see you next time. Bye now. Who knows, maybe a little growth spurt would help me convince to pay stay keep with it, actually go continue with, hi. I don't think I should do this, actually, I'm awful.